Hey, it's me, Destin. Welcome back to Smarter Every Day. You're smart. You know how this works by now. We're in the middle of a deep dive series into the U.S. Coast Guard, and they're amazing. We've talked about how they rescue people. We've talked about their gear, like the boat, response boat medium. We've even talked about how they do search patterns, and today is an amazing subject. We're going to explore the MH-65 Dolphin, an incredible aircraft. Now, yes, they're transitioning to Jayhawks at this point, which is a newer platform, but the Dolphin is an incredible aircraft, and we're going to explore everything about about how it works, let's go get smarter every day and let's learn about this amazing aircraft. All right, so what, what's your official title? AMT-1, James Hockenberry. AMT-1, what's AMT? Aviation Maintenance Technician, first okay. class. Okay, awesome, sounds good. So you're responsible for what on the aircraft? So I am basically, they call it a hoist operator in the civilian world, but I'm a flight mechanic. So we back up the pilots uh, the co-pilot, and then we also uh, hoist. We, we control the hoist and the winch. Are you also a certified flight mechanic? I am, yep. Certified okay, flight so mechanic. you own the bird. Well, consider the pilot owns the bird. We just do the maintenance on it. So like the pilot's in command. He has the choice whether we're going to do it or not going to do it. Got we it. just back up the pilots okay. is what we do. So if we break down or go somewhere, we're the ones that are gonna do the maintenance or look at it and say, hey, sir, this is the problem, this is what's going on. And then they're gonna be the ultimate decision on what happens and who makes that call. All right, so, so, so let's start from the top. This is a dolphin, right? Dolphin, yep. This is like one of the major inspections we do. We take it all apart. Um, it's more for like corrosion, uh, making sure that there's nothing wrong with the aircraft, um, finding little things that we need to fix prior to them actually breaking. Okay. So um, the Fatigue, tail things like that. Yep. Yep. So the tail rotor. It's so, actually more like a fan, isn't it? Yep. So this actually counteracts the rotor head turning. So this will actually basically pushes so that the rotor head will turn in one direction, and this pushes the opposite direction to keep us straight. Gotcha. Um, it's controlled by the pedals up front through this shaft right here. Mm -hmm. So that's the tail rotor drive shaft, and then what's the hydraulic up, actuator? Mm -hmm. So what ends up happening is when hydraulics are on. This pushes in and out and makes the blades turn in and out. So next question is, if this was originally a civilian aircraft, I know there's two types of hydraulic fluid. There's Skydrol and then there's a military hydraulic fluid. Correct. What does this use? This is uses the military, red. Skydrol is okay. blue, we use straight mineral oil. I wanted to pause and say, I'm sorry. This is what's happening. So I'm very excited about this helicopter. Hockenberry is clearly very excited about this helicopter. And we're like matching each other's energy. And so I'm saying like every word I've ever heard about helicopters, but this is okay, right? Because I've learned a lot like over my like helicopter experience but at the same time I'm still trying to learn and you'll see that we're just gonna totally hit my ignorance wall here in a second and it's very interesting when that happens but I apologize for trying to like name drop all these words I, I've heard recently whatever I'm just sorry and is this JP-8 this aircraft uh, what kind of jet fuel do you use JP-8 yeah okay. jet a JP-8 all that stuff so we use normal normal stuff that any any aviation fuel is going to be using. Awesome. So, so he's taking the, is this called the cowling? What is yep, this called? That's, we call that the doghouse. Okay. That's what we call it. Um, but yeah, it's a transition cowling going from the engines back to the drive shaft. What's the, what's the tail called? Just the tail? The Finistron. The Finistron? Tail Finistron. Okay. That's what we call it. And is this metal or fiberglass? Fiberglass. Okay. Uh, Kevlar and uh, carbon fiber and fiberglass. Most carbon? Of yeah, this, this actually, the primary structure which is most of this right here where the tail shroud is, is actually Kevlar. Most gotcha. of this is Kevlar. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Everything's lightweight, as you can see. Like we can take everything off by hand. Um, even, our, even our blades, our blades are all taken off by hand. Really? So we, yeah, you only need two guys, one on the head, he pops the pins, which... Sir, did you, just move the, did you just move the tail rotor by hand up there? Yeah, you can move it by up here. Can you... Can Head's you, turning. Oh, wow. And did you, did I see you move it by putting your hand inside the... Yeah, you have to make sure that it can freely turn. Can you do it again, please? Yeah, of course, no problem. Wow. Yep. That's amazing. So Thank it's you. A, that's a free power turbine. So it basically runs kind of like, um, how can I explain it? So it's kind of like uh, your bicycle. As it turns and you go faster, it'll keep up with the bicycle until it like just keeps pushing it. Almost like a clutch. Yep, it's a slip clutch basically is what it is. So okay. it just keeps going until it gets to self-sustaining and then it just runs and it just free power turbine. We have a vertical stabilizer 
and a horizontal stabilizer. Why do you have the vertical? Because that's that's something so I have So if you're seen. going straight, and if you you are going a certain speed, which I think it's 80 knots or above, if you're going straight, then your tail is not even needed. If you're going a certain speed and you're, you you lose your tail, you can actually counteract the tail by these. If you look, if you look at them from an angle, they're actually tilted like this. What so do you they, mean, tilted like what? So they're count, they're basically tilted out. Oh, and I see. So is that if you look at the bla the vert stab too, you can see how it cambers that way. Yes. Just like the fins do as well. So that way, if you're going straight, it's counteracting the blades on the head. Okay. So that way, if you're going straight, the blades are turning this way. It's actually trying to push you the other way. It's not called on a helicopter. It's not P factor. But no. It, no, but it's something like that. Yeah, it's kind of the same concept. I mean, it's. I mean, if you look at it. It's just like a, it's just like a blade of a, of a fixed wing. So you have it, you have its back, which is curved, and yep. its flat face. That's cool. So it kind of counteracts as you're going through the air. That's fine. What do we have here? So these are your lights. These are for at night or for. Um, Those are lights. Yep. Little diodes. Things have changed. Yeah. So these actually are for infrared. So those don't want, like you won't be able to see them. That's for when we do our like secret squirrel missions. Yep. They'll have these on and turn everything else off. You guys will go blacked out. Yeah, we'll go black out. Um, Even though it's orange. Yep. Really? Yeah. So like we do an drug R stuff. Yeah, we do an RWAI mission too. Uh, I don't know what that rotary means. wing intercept. So okay. we're we do it here as well, but it's mostly done in Atlantic City. And if we're doing like secret squirrel stuff, we'll turn these on. And then there's a there's a light here which shines on the Coast Guard, and then these actually have them on the, uh, the ends too for, our, awesome. for all of our lights. Is this an antenna right here? It is, yep. So HF. What, that's your high frequency? Yep, high frequency antenna. And then of course everything's like a normal aircraft or helicopter, everything's got stations. You know, you got like your 6630, 8840, and everything's designated from the nose up back like your datum lines, all that stuff. It's yep. kind of the same same exact concept. These datum lines that he's talking about, those are imaginary planes, and you can measure things from those planes. And so usually they're in a major rivet joint or at a firewall or something like that. It's common for most aircraft. So you know this thing inside and out. Uh, I mean, I've been on it 17 years, so I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, retractable landing gear. Yep, retractable landing gear. So th this isn't an APU. This is just uh, environmental for working in there. Just an air conditioner. You guys are just, that's posh. Mm -hmm. Let's be real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's because it gets so hot here during the summers. So they just use those. They used to um, hook into the side, but we need to get smaller tubes to hook them in. So it'll actually blow through all the air, air conditioning inside. Can we walk up and see the power plant? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Sweet. So this so is. So we got the suck, squeeze, mm -hmm. bang, blow. Yep, that's it right there. All right, yep. so show and me what we got. Accessory drive section. That's the drive shaft goes in through here, through flex couplings, and then it goes into the transmission cowling, transmission deck. We call this the flower pot, and then the drive shaft basically comes through here. It's like you said, the intake, compression, combustion, free power turbine. They added this later just because. Um, one of them actually exploded back in the day, a long time ago. So they added this on there and then they figured out what it was. It was just different types of fins, all that stuff. So they put this on there just to protect the aircraft. If the free power turbine did excessively go off and nothing stopped it, if it exploded, it wouldn't damage the other engine or the blades or anything. So this would literally just smash it and block it up. So on run up for a helicopter, I hear a lot about TGTs, turbine gas temperatures. Yep. Where are you measuring that at? Is there a temperature sending unit yep, in here? Yep, so we have our thermocouples. Yep. So it's just like a normal thermocouple. You have two different thermocouples in there, measures the difference in, in temperatures, and then gives you your temperature and it sends it to the front of the... We don't really... We monitor it, but it's it's kind of like... It's not part of the run-up procedure? Our big, our big section is our power turbine. Okay. So N1, N2, um, and that's all done by FADEC. FADEC monitors all of our system. Yep. So uh, full engine, full authority digital engine control unit. You can see everything. Yep. It monitors everything up in the cockpit. Okay. So this is the reservoir for... That's the engine reservoir. Yep. Okay. Mobile Jet 254. Where's the hydraulic reservoir? Uh, there's two of them. So primary and secondary, and they're right here. And then they come through here and you have your servos. Um, so this is... 
This is your big uh, collective servo. I mean, I guess cyclic and collective, they're all the same, right? The big uh, actuators? Yeah, so we, as mechanics, we just go right, left, for naft. It's kind of opposite. Uh-huh. So... Right, left, because this is the side that you work on. Well, it's technically, it's technically because the aircraft, the head turns. Uh-huh. And it's like I, not Isaac Newton said, helicopter's not meant to fly. And they figured <laughs> out that it needs to be biting before and drafting after. Gyroscopic procession. Yep, so it's okay. before and after. So technically this actually hits here. What Hockenberry is talking about here is something called gyroscopic precession. And basically, as the rotor system is turning, if I want to tilt the helicopter this way, I actually give that command in the back. It's a cyclic and collective mixing issue. And if you want to learn more about this, I did a whole deep dive series on how helicopters work, of which this video will be a part of. So go check that out. Check out the video on cyclic and collective to understand gyroscopic precession better. It's a fascinating topic. So as it turns, it bites whatever the inputs they put in it's actually so in your mechanical in your mechanical interaction with this you say my right is right here because of gyroscopic precession correct so you actually think about that while you're working we on have it. to yeah yeah that's cool because we so we also do the mechanics also do uh, track and balance so as we do track and balance heads turning as we do track and balance we're actually measuring the distance of the track based on what this PCR is doing. PCR so, contr pitch is, control rod. Okay. So we adjust these. So like if we do a major, oh that, that plane's not off. So when we do like a major inspection, we actually pull this all off. Uh huh. So this whole head will come off and then the PCRs we adjust. But when we take it off, it's not going to be the same as when we put it back together. Because we may add like new uh, swash plate, we may add new. Um, um, star flex bushings rods we may add something that was new that broke before what's up with the shims here so that's waiting so we wait so when we do our um, track and balance we take everything and then it takes an input and the actual machine puts it together and says okay this is what you need to do so we'll adjust the PCRs we'll add weights and we'll move our trim tabs yep the and trim tabs you just bend them right bend them yep yeah. we just bend them and That's so cool. it takes all that input and the machine actually does it itself and then tells us what we do we do it on ground then we do it in a hover and then we do it in flight okay and then after we get out of a hover we go into flight that's it we're out of hover we stay in going in forward flight got it that's awesome man mm -hmm. that's cool this episode of Smart Everyday has a new sponsor, and this sponsor has totally changed the game for my buddy's business. This episode is sponsored by ShipStation. ShipStation is a way that you can save money on shipping things, and if you sell things online, you can consolidate all of the places you sell things into one dashboard, and it is an amazing product that saves you money. My buddy John has a company called JJ George. JJ George makes grill accessories, like these big, nice cedar wooden tables for people that use grills. They've got these really cool torches that people use to light the charcoal. I asked John how they use ShipStation. ShipStation has been a game changer for us and uh, we use it every day. What does it do? It allows us to take all of our orders from all the different platforms we sell them. We, we have a website, we sell through Amazon, Walmart, Etsy. And uh, so it brings everything, addresses, products ordered, all into one dashboard and we can print and ship. Uh, we don't have to copy paste do anything. The cool thing about ShipStation is everything is under one dashboard. You're able to control all the shipments that you use and it made everything streamlined so that you can reduce the amount of labor that goes into shipping things and it makes their e-commerce business possible. Pretty smart rednecks here in Alabama <laughs> shipping out grill products. The way you can do this if you want to try it Go to shipstation.com slash smarter. You get 60 days for free. You can try it. Would you recommend trying it for 60 days? Absolutely. I think it's one of those things. If uh, you try it, you're, you're, you're yeah, yeah. They actually said that. They said people that use it for like a year use it for life. Oh you know, yeah, there's no, okay. we, we couldn't live without it. Okay, shipstation.com slash smarter. Try it for 60 days for free. Thank you very much, John and Roger, for uh, showing me how this thing works. Yep. The one thing that's very, very, very different from any aircraft I've ever been on is this bad boy right here the nope, winch hoist. the hoist it's we not, call it a, we call it our hoist it's not the winch nope hoist and it's hydraulically actuated yep so does that mean that this is basically a hyd can we 3000 3000 psi um and then it's electrically operated 
So it's electrically operated and hydraulically, um, basically goes up and down by hydraulics. Oh, I got you. So, so electrically goes in and out and then hydraulically goes up and down. What do you mean goes in and out? So we boom it in and out. So it's got an electrical uh, boom actuator inside here. I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're saying. I'm gonna show you. Okay, so you're a pilot? He's a flight mech. Flight mech? So it booms in like this, so you're gonna get to do this. You're gonna be hooked up, and then this will be up, and then it'll boom in electrically and boom out electrically. Really? Yep. So, so we have it on What you got there? It's a handheld pendant. Yeah. You control it, so you can boom it in and out, and then. So electrically boom in and out, and hydraulically up and down. The actuator, this whole control panel, uh -huh. is what controls the operation of the hoist. Does it hoist up and down very quickly? It's 200 feet variable. Is so it 200 feet per minute? I don't know. Is that fast? It's pretty fast. Really? Yeah. yeah okay. You can quick. you can hurt a swimmer if you do it too fast. You yeah. can drop them too you fast. Can, you can drop them too fast, or you can hurt them. Like bringing them up. Like if you you'll feel it when you start doing it when you do it tomorrow or whatever. Um, you'll feel it. It literally if we. If we two, we call it two blocking, which means that we go full up, it'll like, it'll jerk you up. It'll hurt your back. So when you're flying and you got this thing boomed in and out, so right now we're about halfway, right? Mm -hmm. it's, or, halfway. it's halfway. Do you mind booming it all the way in so I can see kind of where it tucks in there? Jim, open the hatch so he can see where he's going to stand. Oh. So that's how we hoist. And the rotor's right there. Yeah. yeah. That's we'll crazy. Boom it all the way in. And then, uh, you know, we'll boom it all the way in to hook up the swimmer or device, bring it in the cabin, hook up, hook up whatever we need, bring it back up and then boom it out. We'll Could your hand hit the rotor? I know, I mean, it's a dumb question. Oh, yeah. Okay, so there's a serious. Yeah, don't, don't stick your hands up. <laughs> so opening that hatch is a big deal. Yeah. This, this hatch is, I mean, it's there for our convenience where we can see things, but uh, if you're standing and hoisting, I wouldn't advise yeah. reaching up like that. So a helicopter's pushing down. So does that change his aerodynamics when you start, like this, yeah, if well, you're flying forward, we I'm get more bite. Is sir? that what you're asking? Like we get more bite to hold us, so we're burning fuel faster. Yes. yes. So we're burning more fuel than what we normally would just flying around. So like our normal flight time is like between two hours and two and a half hours. If we go straight into hoisting, it's about 30 minutes. Because we're you, just pulling power constantly. So, but you don't have this boom forward. We keep it boomed out in you, flight. You keep it boomed out? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and because it's you fly more efficiently like that? I don't know. It doesn't really it make matters. a, I don't think it matters much. It doesn't really, like if we took this off, it wouldn't save us any fuel. I mean, it may save us weight because this thing's heavy, but it's not going to save us much fuel. And aerodynamically, I don't think it affects forward flight or anything. Because gotcha. The wind doesn't really catch it all that much. Are, are you able to, to drop the hoist now or? Yeah, yeah we I can turn can, it on. Yeah, you want to turn? Yeah. So, so that's an auxiliary hydraulic unit over there? Yep. Hydraulic power. You call that an HPU? What do you call that thing? It's a hydraulic power unit, ground power unit. Yeah. Is that the speed? No, 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 no. That's just appropriate for being on the ground here. First 10 feet, it goes slow. And if you keep going, there's a switch. You should ask him how slow. That actuates. How slow? 50 feet. 50 feet per minute. So is there another saying for that? No, he's right. <laughs> he just he just got FMI qualified. Oh, all right. So he's an instructor now. So we get, it's about how fast it goes right there. It's very fast. Yeah, it's, it's pretty quick. Steel cable? Yes. Stainless steel. We have 240 feet of it. Yeah, we could hoist safely hoist at about 200 feet what's the preferred uh height off the off the water 35 so, feet 35 yeah why 35 is that out of ground effect uh it's in ground effect so it gives us more more power more fly out um and then it just depends on what the real hoist is so like if you're going most of our cases are shrimping boats so if we get a shrimping boat they have all that rigging that's everywhere so that rigging is really really dangerous for us to put a swimmer through and the pendulum effect really takes effect. So the lower we can be, the better for the swimmer it is. So what happens is, is if you start a pendulum down low, 
it'll start and then as he comes up, it'll get worse and worse and worse as he's coming up. And same vice versa. Oh, if, because momentum is conserved. Right. So like if it's swinging as the radius of the pendulum gets smaller. Yep, it gets faster. And then same as he's going down. So if he starts with a little swing, as he goes down, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, we've got our survivor in the basket here, right? And if we think about our pendulum equation, the period or the length of time between swings on the pendulum is a function of the length of the string. Now I can change the length of the string here. Now here's a couple things that Hockenberry told us. Number one, if I have a really small swing right there, by the time I increase it, or I guess hoist it up, it gets really fast. And so that becomes a problem. So I got my swing, I increase it, boom, up there. It, it's a problem. You, you could hurt the person as you swing them up. I'm doing a bad job. So you can see that the period goes down and that's a function of the pendulum equation, right? The other thing he said is if you have a low swing, like a, a really, I don't know, like two feet, let's say, by the time you let it out, because of the conservation of momentum, that becomes a much greater distance down below. And that's a problem if you've got a boat with a mast on it, right? So pendulum motion, when you have a person you're trying to save in a basket, becomes a really big deal. And we're actually gonna get to see that in a future episode when I'm in the basket. Very interesting. 600 pounds max. That's it. That's a two, that's a two person lift. Yep, that's it. This is your float? Yeah, this is one of our floats. Then we have another one right there. This one right here. This is our back right float. Yep. And so these will go off. You punch um, them with pyro? How, how do they no, activate no, them? Uh, oh. They're helium. Got it. They're done by helium. Okay. And then the pilot can do it up front. There's three spots. He can. The pilot has it on his collective, the co-pilot, and then there's a, like a shot up front that they can push it to. I can wow. show all that to you. So, so you'll do it when you touch down at the water or before? So they have to do it before because it's not water activated. So if they hit the water and they haven't hit those, then it's gonna sink. Okay. And it usually will only stay afloat for four minutes. Got it. In light winds and stuff like that, so. With the floats? With yeah. the floats. Oh, wow. And so it's it, because the egress. head is so, stay upright. the head is so heavy that it, it's gonna roll. Like that's why when we do our training, we simulate we're rolling. Right. Because it's gonna happen. It's yep. just a matter of time. Right. Got it. It'd be, it'd be uh, like the best case scenario would be it stays upright yeah and you can all get out which it's happened before but it's more than likely it's gonna roll over gotcha can we can, we, can i hop in yeah go ahead come i'll go in after you this, this is your oh. office well so they're doing they're doing their inspections which is kind of cool yep show so, me around your office here yeah so we're they're basically doing a whole 7 14 30 90 day and we're doing a corrosion inspection so we're just checking to make sure like most of the stuff like these are frames so this is part of the frame. Yep. So this corrodes a lot. We get a lot of corrosion here because the swimmer sits right here. Okay. So a lot of the water that when the swimmers, they're wet when they come in. So a lot of the water will get into here and corrosion is our worst enemy on these aircraft. Okay. Like that is our bread and butter is trying to keep these out from being corroded. Um, so is that is that a main structural member right there? Yep, yeah, this is. So if this corrodes, then the plane's done. Like this, these are uh, Texas patches. Those are the same thing. If they get a crack or corrode. Oh, because of the shape of the Texas patch. Yeah, that's I why see. we call it a Texas patch, yep. Our yep. fish plate, same thing. Uh-huh. Um, but if those crack or if they get any corrosion in here, we have to, the plane's grounded. We can't fly it until we replace the stringer. That's a big deal. Uh, yep. It's so, a big deal. And this is our, this is our main, this is where we're normally replacing stuff. Spend all your time. Yep. yep. So, so in here, what do we have? So, so this is all the electronics, 1980s. Rockwell great Collins stuff. stuff. Yeah, yeah super it. neat. Yep. So this is all, we call them tweets, AETs. Uh -huh. I'm an AMT, I do everything but this. I don't okay. like this stuff. No, yeah, no. you don't like twisting wires? No, I don't <laughs> like getting shot. So, so where will you sit in the aircraft? Right where you're standing. Okay, there so will, there will be some kind of seat here. There'll be a seat, it goes left and right. Um, the swimmers, they upgraded their seats about uh, seven or eight years ago, I want to say. So theirs moved now too. They used to not. They used to be on this like little orange thing that just sat on the deck and a lot of guys were having back problems. So they went to a new seat and it allows them, we can close it now and move it off to the side. So now we can get all of our stuff out a little easier. Um, and then our seat kind of does the same thing. It doesn't collapse, but it moves all the way to the left or to the right and it swivels 360 degrees. So which one's the pilot? Which one's the co-pilot? Co-pilot and pilot. It's so French, so it's opposite. That's how I remember it. Okay. It's not like your car. Right. It's opposite of your car. 
Okay. So, uh, co-pilot, pilot. Okay. Co-pilot on the left, pilot on the right. Yep. Pilot's near the hoist. Yes. So he's in charge. He's the one that makes all the calls. He tells us, yes, we're going to do this or no, we're not, or it's too sketchy. But as a crew, as a crew, we do it too. Okay. But he's the ultimate factor. Is this the, uh, I mean, this door is just for evac? Correct. Yep. That door, that's normally closed. Uh, we don't ever really open it unless we're just like uh, doing our engine rinse or we need to go out that side or something. That door's normally closed. It's just an egress hazard or egress. That's awesome. And so you got all your stuff here, like, yep. hey, we're in the water, come find us kind of stuff. Yep, flares. We've got our uh, e perb, all that stuff over here. And Does then this fly? Our e perbs in the back, sorry. So this, yeah, this is our, um, this is our hoist, our cable cutters. Like you can cut the hoist yep. cable? Yep, we cut the hoist cable. And then we have a quick splice. Uh, right here. Yep, quick splice is here now. It used to be over there. We uh -huh. changed a couple things around. So this is the quick splice. So if something does happen and say, I bring John in and he scrapes along the edge and he gets a big gouge in it, but we're rescuing people, I can cut the cable, I can put this on and we can still hoist in an emergency procedure. Holy cow. Yeah, so, and this will hold him. This is 600 pounds rated, but just that like that. But you can't hoist all the way up when you Correct. do that. Correct, so there's a limiting factor on that. You have to remember that you cut the cable. You won't have that 50 feet per minute. You go to that 200 to 50, you know, that rated. Oh, I see. So if you go all the way up and two block it, like I was talking for, talking about before, if you do that, you're definitely gonna, you're gonna, you're probably gonna slip this or you're gonna damage that hoist. So by or John could fall out. So this isn't a, a splice like, this is like a new end to the cable. It's, it, well, it wraps. So I can show you how it looks. So, so this is it. And it, it literally tells you how to lay the line. So I've never used this. Uh, I hope to never use this because I know it's gonna be bad if we're using this. Yeah. Um, but we have it in an emergency situation. I. My goal, the titanium? just because John and that I, weighs nothing. Yeah, it's really light. Just because John and I, we went to high school together and everything. Like I look at it that way. Like these are my brothers, and I don't want to leave them on scene. I want to get them in my aircraft and get home safely. I don't want to leave them. So if I have to go to this, that's what I'm gonna do. And that's how we. I think 99% of everybody in this aircraft feels the same way. Um, that swimmers are part of the family and they're the ones in the water yeah like we need to get them back in the plane because it's going to do more damage and it's going to be a longer night if we're leaving them on scene and trying to come back and get them you know yeah. what i mean so do we want them to know that though Nah, i think john already knows that <laughs> so is there like a, a really interesting camaraderie between swimmer and the it's a amt am i saying that right correct yeah flight mech flight mech yeah swimmers and flight mech so is it a I like I like to say these guys are my heroes because I can jump out of a helicopter but I can't jump back into it. Oh. So these Oh yeah. You yeah. you can't you, somebody's gotta hit the switch. Right. So these these guys are my heroes. Oh wow, that's pretty interesting. And uh I mean you see what they're doing. Like I try and tell people like flight mechs are like they're super cool. They're gonna take apart an entire helicopter, put it all back together, and then go fly it. So pretty rad that's that's pretty I'm, cool I'm, i admire them a lot <laughs> the, what what they do there's no way i can do it. they keep us alive you know and so anything we can do as swimmers to help them out we do you know it's, it's a we're a really good team we work we work well it's that's awesome team. well thanks man i'm you're looking welcome. forward to it you're welcome. yeah you're welcome. thank you all right, the Smarter Everyday Coast Guard series continues. And uh, in an upcoming video, I'm gonna be the duck, they call it, the person in the basket that they save on Lake Pontchartrain in New Orleans. It is an amazing experience, and I think you will really enjoy that. We get to see all this stuff in action. We get to see how it works, uh, and it's really, really cool. So if you'd like to consider checking that out, you could subscribe to Smarter Everyday if you're into that sort of thing. If not, no big deal. Also, if you go to smartereveryday.com, there's an email list you can click and sign up and I'll just email you when I upload that video, which is really cool. I don't spam you, I promise. Also, big thanks to everybody that supports Smarter Every Day on patreon.com slash smarter every day. I am grateful you help me make this sort of stuff and I'm super, super thankful. Anyway, that's it. I'm Destin, you're getting smarter every day. Have a good one, bye.